You know, for the last maybe what, uh, one and a half, uh, one and a half sessions now, you have been learning biomimicry. Um, I'm going to take you to a completely new topic. You will find out the connection between this topic and biomimicry later on. But like I, I don't know whether you remember, the first time I spoke to you, I said I started learning a subject called systems thinking, which led me to biomimicry. From that time, I have told myself that whenever I teach biomimicry, I will also talk about systems thinking. So, the, the, the topic that we are going to learn now is called systems thinking, right? What you see in front of you, systems thinking, S-Y-S-T-E-M-S, -E thinking, thinking in systems, systems thinking, etc. It is a huge subject, huge, 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 um, amazingly huge subject. But I am going to try and explain it to you in the simplest of terms, simplest of language, simplest of concepts, right? Because like I said, there are very few topics in the world which transform you completely. And this is one topic. I still remember when I was working with uh, TCS, um, I, I do not know how many of you have le uh, heard of the legendary Mr. F. C. Kohli, who is known as the father of computer of software in India. Um, he, he started TCS by the way and he brought, I don't, you, you, you can imagine right, you, you manage, this, today India is a, is a, is a what, is, is, the, is the biggest, biggest uh, in the world for software and Mr. Kohli started that revolution. I still remember uh, I worked with him very closely, uh, unfortunately uh, he is no more now and I was one of the fortunate people to have actually interacted with uh, Mr. F.C. Kohli. So, he told me, Shiva, he says, I think this was in 1993, 94, he said, you must learn systems thinking. But I sort of ignored it at that time. And it's taken me, what, almost 20 years or a little more than 20 years to actually listen to his advice. You have this great opportunity now to start learning systems thinking in your life. Because what you're going to hear, what you're going to learn is something not too many people even know. So, let us start. I am going to show you a picture. Look at that. What you are looking at is the human digestive system, right? So, what are you looking at? You are looking at the mouth, you are looking at uh, mouth, tongue, epiglottis, you are looking at the salivary glands, you are looking at pharynx, you are looking at esophagus, stomach, pancreas, small intestine, etcetera, etcetera. Now, each of this is separate. Each of this you can look at separately. But, but what happens? Look, 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 at, look, at the, look at the wording here. A system is an interconnected set of elements that is coherently organized in a way that achieves something. That is all it is. Can you believe that an entire topic, an entire topic is contained in one line? Let us look at this line once again. Okay? Let us look at this line. A system is an interconnected set of elements. So, you need elements. What are the elements? These are elements. Mouth is an element, tongue is an element, epiglottis is an element, salivary glands, pharynx are elements. What is that? An element is interconnected. Each of them is connected to the other. Every one of them is connected. Organized in a way that achieves something. So, what does this whole thing achieve? Achieves the ability to swallow food and taste food. So, the digestive system has elements, 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 but they are all connected in such a way that all of them achieve a purpose. So, what are the three things? Look, I need not even have told you the next three, right? What are the three things a uh, system has? It has elements, interconnections and it has a purpose. That is it. That is it. I am going to, I am going to uh, wait for two more minutes for you to look at that digestive system and ask what is a system? A system, elements, interconnections, purpose. Elements, interconnections, purpose. And suddenly, you say, wait Shiva, what are the other systems I know? 
So, I am going to give you 2 minutes to look at other systems. Okay. Did you get any answers? The family is a system. The family is a system. Your college is a system. IIT Madras is a system. Elements, interconnections, purpose. Look at that. This is a classic slide to remember. Classic slide to remember systems thinking. Heap versus, what is a heap? What is a heap? A heap of stones, right? So, what I do is I, I pick up, I have a heap of stones, I have a heap of stones and I remove one heap. If I remove one heap, what happens? Nothing happens. The whole heap remains the same, just less, one stone less. But look at the next picture. If I, that is a house, right? If I, if I remove one portion of the house, the whole portion crumbles. So, go back to this slide. Go back to this slide now. Imagine removing the mouth. What happens? The whole digestive system, you, you cannot say, no, 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 I have only, I have only uh, removed one element. So, what? Out of all these things, I only removed the mouth. But the whole digestive system fails the minute you remove the mouth. So, therefore, what are we learning? A system is interdependent. Everything is dependent on everything. Look at that. Look at the interdependency now. The mouth is dependent on, on, on the salivary gland. The tongue is dependent on the mouth. The esophagus is dependent on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on, in the, on the liver, the liver. So, suddenly what happens? So, for instance, uh, you know, supposing I have kidney failure. Can I say, let me remove my kidney and keep it at home and go? No. The minute I have kidney failure, my whole body can die. And if you can start to become a system thinker, if you can start to look at the connections around you, right? For instance, take IIT Madras. What are the elements? I asked you to reflect on IIT Madras, right? What are the elements in IIT Madras? Elements are the teachers in IIT Madras, the professors, the students, the canteen, the, 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 the campus, the director, the management. Everybody is an element, right? All of, can you remove one of them? Can you say, I do not want professors for tomorrow? What will happen? The whole system will collapse. Parents, fees, resources, the government, everybody is involved in creating one IIT Madras. So, that is what we are learning. If from today you can look at, you can look at, look around you and say, identify the systems and say everything around me is a system, which means a system essentially contains elements, interconnections and that, that interconnection, interconnected elements have a purpose. You have started to become a systems thinker. Now, it is becoming easy, right? All I am going to do, all I am going to do is reinforce this learning. That is all. So, look at this system. So, look at the system. This is the owl. There is a frog. There is the owl. There is a frog, grasshopper, mouse. Okay, let us assume you do not like mice. You say, I hate mice. I am going to kill all the mice in the world. So, what you do? You kill the mice. What happens if you kill the mice? What happens anyone? What happens? The, the frogs will start to increase. The owls will have no food at all. So, once the mouse is dead, there will be full of frogs over here and all the owls will die. Simp you, you never intended, right? You never intended to kill the owl, but you have killed the owl by killing the mouse. So, suddenly we are learning that many, oh, by the way, snake also. I think the snakes love mice. Right. Many times your mouse, your mice can be uh, gotten rid of by a snake. I am sure even birds, even the hawk, everybody likes mice, I think. I do not accept us, except me, I think. So, therefore, this is what this is. Everything is dependent on, this is probably, we can call it a food chain uh, uh, in the jungle and everything is dependent on all these, the hawk is an element, but inside the hawk there is a system, how it flies, fox is an element, rabbit is an element, etc. See how interesting it is becoming, right? Let us very quickly read this. What is systems thinking? Systems thinking is a, I am just doing this because it is also important to remember the theory, the, the, the rules and all that. So, holistic approach to understand how elements of a system are connected to each other, we know that now very well. How the system relates to a larger system, therefore, one small system how does it relate to, how does this whole system relate to a different system, right? And how changes in any one system affects the rest. So, therefore, if I take off the mouse, something happens. Go back to, go, you know, what happened was, uh, let us assume, for instance, my sister, right? They, had, they, they were a family, my sister, her husband, the children, all of them were family. So, they were one system, the family. 
each one depending on the other interconnected to each other and all that. But my sister passed away last year, very unfortunately. But and because she passed away, what happened? One element from the system got changed and, and the family members did not know how to cope with each other because they had lost one family member and this you will find in almost everything in your life, right? And one of the way, one of the way you understand life is to understand systems. Everybody will be wondering why is it that suddenly there is so much confusion in the house, suddenly. And then if you are a systems thinker, you will start to understand that the loss of my sister in that family has to affect the entire family in some way and over a period of time they start to cope to understand how to deal with that loss. So the system for me systems thinking is about understanding. The more and more of a systems thinking thinker you are, the more and more you start to understand things, understand why things happen because of the connections and the dependencies and the purpose etc etc. So that is systems thinking. Have you started to understand? Now you may probably draw the parallel between why I am doing systems thinking in a biomimicry class because biomimicry is about connections, right? Every organism connected to the other, connected to a problem, etc. Let us go on. So what, what do we do with systems thinking? Systems thinking, you can, you can examine why problems happen, what are problems? You can understand the nature of a situation, you can diagnose issues, you can explore options and broaden perspective. Your whole perspective changes, right? When I told you about my sisters, uh, when, my, when I told you about, about that the family suffering because my sister is not there, your whole pro you start to understand why things happen and suddenly you are able to understand, diagnose the issue. So if you are a counsellor to my sister's family, you will say, you know what, this is how you can deal with it. You are having all these problems because of the loss of one lady there and therefore maybe maybe one of you should take some of her responsibilities, the other should take some of her responsibilities etc. and you start to diagnose and help people. System thinking can be a brilliant way to coach people, to help people. This is a classic example. There can't be a better picture to understand systems than what is called the, the how many blind men, six blind men here, it could be five, six, whatever. So the story is that there are six blind men, all of them are blinded and they are touching a elephant, an elephant, right? So therefore, there is an elephant, but they do not know it is an elephant, they are all blindfolded and one man touches the uh, trunk of the elephant and he touches the trunk of the elephant and he says, he says it should be a snake because that is how it feels. Another man touches the leg of the elephant and says it is a tree. One man touches the ear of the elephant and says it is a fan. One man touches the, the, the trunk of an, the, 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 what is that, the, uh, the, I forgot, the, uh, the tusk of the elephant. The tusk of, see how you know memory can be horrible. The tusk of the elephant and says it is a, I do not know how many of you are trying to help me when you are looking at me online, okay. I am sure many of you are trying to help me saying, hey Shiva, it is tusk, tusk. And one man touches the tusk of the elephant and says it is a spear. And, and all these people, all these people, what have they done? They have touched only one part of the elephant and they think it is something, something right. And then you remove the blindfold. And you remove the blindfold and what do they see? They see a, an elephant and same thing happens to all of us, right? We think that our problems are the most important things. So if you are in IIT Madras, you will say the canteen, I am in charge of the canteen and whatever happens, this is what must happen in the canteen. And suddenly what happens? Because you are so adamant, and because you want that canteen, whatever, whatever you want in the canteen to happen, you forget that it may affect other things. Suppose you want to keep the canteen open on, let us say, throughout the night. That is what you are saying. Because you are not looking at IIT as a whole, you forget that it could be a security issue. So the security could be affected because it is open the entire night. So before you make a decision, before you make a decision, systems thinking helps you to look at the entire picture from the top. And when you look at IIT Madras from the top, 
Suppose you are able to take a helicopter, I will come back to this again and again and again, this helicopter view. You take a helicopter above IIT Madras and you look at IIT Madras from the top, what do you see? You see the entire system, all the elements. You see the professors, you see the campus, you see the, you see the trees, you see the deer, you see the dogs, you see the, the houses, you see the canteen, you see the students and you see other, other systems interacting, right? You see the government system interacting, the family system interacting, the examination system interacting, the career system interacting. You see so many systems interacting and suddenly you say, wow, this is how I have to look at IIT Madras from now on. I have to look at the entire thing as one system because most of us, most of us are wearing blindfolds. We only see what we only imagine what is in front of us. The minute you remove your blindfold, so this elephant story is not just for those six blind men, right? It is for every one of us, a request for every one of us to remove our blindfolds and look at the entire system, right? Okay. So, therefore, I have been talking so much about IIT Madras, so I might as well give you a slide on it. So, what are the elements? I am sure, see now what you should do is now start to add to this, add to this, right. So, I, I may have missed out something. So, the elements in IIT Madras are students. You, you can look at your own college, it does not have to be IIT Madras. Almost every college in India, almost every college in the world have similar elements and, and, and connections and all that. So, students is an element, faculty is an element, curriculum is an element, facilities are elements. The purpose is, the purpose of IIT Madras is to impart higher education and engineering. Now, purpose can change, purpose can be for, so for instance, there is, there is a, there is an activity in high, in, act, in IIT Madras called Sarang, right. Now, the, for that the purpose could be to keep the students entertained, to bring out the talents of the students. So, a system can have several purposes, not just one purpose, right. And then you have what are the other systems it interacts with? It interacts with government, interacts with parents, interacts with alumni. So, what are you learning? You are learning that IIT Madras has elements, has connections and has a purpose. Now, just examples, look at the match, right? Cricket match, what are the elements in a cricket match? I am going to give you about two, two minutes to answer this question. What are the elements in a cricket match? Yes, I am sure you have written down, you know, the, 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 the players is an element, the, the, the ground is an element, the, the umpire is an element, the um, spectators are element, the ticket sales are elements. So, all of them are elements. What is the purpose of a cricket match? Yes, it could be several things. You could learn from a cricket match, you could learn team building from a cricket match, you could learn, it should be entertainment, it could be learning about competitiveness. It could be simply to, to, to have a great time with family, it could be a family picnic, several purposes. What are the interconnections? Obviously, right? Everything is connected. Remember during the pandemic, none of the football matches, the, uh, the EPL football matches or any football match over the world, even cricket, they had no, they had no crowd. Many players complained. Many players complained, especially the home players complained that they could not win the match because there was no crowd. So, what are we learning? That even the crowd is involved in a team winning. You remove the crowd, some damage, some problems happen. And then you say, how will the, ah, exactly that is the question. How will the system change if one of the above is changed? If you do not have the crowd, the competitiveness decreases. If you do not have the, if you remove the umpire, if you remove the umpire, you cannot have a match. But here again is where the scope for innovation happens, right? You do not remove the entire umpire, but you remove a particular role of the umpire. What has been removed in the present cricket match? The role of the umpire to look at run out has been removed. So, therefore, instead of the umpire, there is a camera which helps the umpire to find out if there is a, if it is run out or not. So, using technology for fulfilling the role of something in a system is a scope for innovation. I am sure now, by now you are starting to understand system thinking, right? System thinking, let us quickly go back to the presentation. System thinking is very simple. A system is an interconnected set of elements 
that is coherently organized in a way that achieves something. A system consists of three things, elements, interconnections, purpose. Heap versus system, systems thinking, holistic approach to understand how elements of a system are connected to each other, how the system relates to a larger system and and how changes in any one affect the rest. Go back to my sister example. What can it do? It can help us examine problems, understand the nature of situations, diagnose issues, broaden perspective. You start to understand a new perspective. Of course, this is the famous story that all of you must remember. And look at that, right? Now, interconnections. Now, when you talk about interconnections, this is a swiggy person or, or a food delivery person. What are the connections? I am going to give you some time to look at the connections. All you can, when you open the door, someone rings the bell, you open the door and there is food in front of your house. But if you are a systems thinker, you will look at all the things that happen behind the scenes and all of them are connected. You know, many of the time, many times we just simply open the tap and complain there is no water. But have you even thought about all the connections behind that opening the tap uh, uh, exercise? So, look at this. What are the connections behind food delivery? Yes, so food delivery, so this the connection behind the scooter that he comes. So, the connection between the automobile, the automobile runs on petrol, there is a connection to petrol or, or fuel and then there is this, uh, this employer, the structure of, of, the, of the service provider and then what does he do? He brings food, therefore, the restaurant is a system, in the restaurant there is a chef, there is a cook, there is a waiter, there is and that is the system. The restaurant gets its, gets its vegetables and from the farmer, therefore, the farm, the farmer is a system and from the farmer, the restaurant, the farmer is depending on the rain. So, the season is a system. Look at the number of systems, right? The rain is a system and imagine if you do not get food or I mean getting food outside your house actually depends on whether or not there was rainfall. If you can start to think like that, if you can start to look at the connections between, between elements, I tell you you, you, you will become a great thinker. People will want you to think for them. People will want your advice. People will come after you, right? And that is what we are learning. I hope uh, what, what we have learned up to now has piqued your interest into, into learning more and more of uh, system thinking. There are plenty of books that you can learn from. Uh, for me, the favorite has been uh, the fifth discipline, uh, and uh, I think that's that's the book that uh, it's called the fifth discipline. You, that's the book I I, st I started getting interested in system thinking uh, with that book, and of course now I'm seeing a lot of connections in the in the natural world. I'm seeing I, I'm able to I'm able to see see the connection. See, essentially, we talked about elements and connections and interdependencies, right? Can you tell me, can you tell me that elements and connections and interdependencies does not exist in the natural world? You can't, right? For instance, look, everything is connected. There is nothing in the natural world. Why, not? Why are we saying natural world, human world, this whole world, everything is connected. We are as much connected to the natural world as the natural world is connected to us. The, the, the there is no, there is no, problem or or solution that exists in a silo in the in, in 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 the in the world right now today why are we saying why are we saying that we must do biomimicry we must turn our uh, turn our uh, eyes to biomimicry we must look for natural nature nature solution why if if they are two separate entities the natural world and the human world then how does it matter? We can keep destroying, right? How does it matter? That means we are doing something that is connected to the natural world, which affects the natural world. So there is that connection. And that is what becoming a systems thinker will do for you, will help you understand that the more and more of nature that you destroy, the more and more of yourself that you're destroying. And if you can see that connection, if you can see that connection, I think you will start to really transform yourself. And I'm saying you, 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 because I think we must start with ourselves, right? The first thing I must do, I must do is understand the connection between 
me putting plastic or me using plastic and, and throwing plastic in the garden and looking at the connection of that plastic, the harm that the plastic will cause to the, to the, to the surrounding and all that and tell myself that I am part of the problem. It's not as if the problem is different and I'm different. I am as much part of the problem as anything else. And if I can see that connection, if I can start to look at systems thinking in that holistic way, then I am not going to be, I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going to be any more irresponsible because I know that I am as much part of the problem as anything else. So, like we always say, the change has to start from us. In this context, in this context, there is this video, <clears throat> how wolves change rivers. I'm going to ask you to pause the video right now. Pause this video, what I'm talking to you right now, and look at this video, please. That's exactly what I did before I started speaking to you. It's, it's a video that will help you, it's a video that will help you understand exactly how system thinking works in the natural world. How the introduction of wolves in the Yellowstone Park has actually, has actually helped change the behavior of rivers. How the introduction of wolves in the Yellowstone Park has decreased the number of deer and therefore, because the deer want to move away from the, from the wolves into a different area, the vegetation in that area starts to grow. And because the vegetation starts to grow, more and more animals, more and more birds, the trees become stronger. And because there is so much of vegetation, because there is so much of vegetation, the rivers start to change their direction, change their behavior. I'm sure if you had paused the video and if you had, if you had looked at it, then you will understand what I'm saying. So this video is important for us to remember. So keep this video for yourself, you know, in a sense, whenever you have to explain system thinking to someone, explain how system thinking works in the natural world, this video is going to really, really help you understand. And it also help you, it also help you become, become more aware of what you can do for the environment and how even a small change from you can have a big cause and effect relationship, right? You can cause a big, big change by simply making a small change in the way you do things. And that you learn from the video. I have a question for you. I, uh, I am, uh, I'm 16 years old and I, I have just come back after doing very badly in an exam. And I'm, I'm, I'm up, I'm up, up, absolutely upset. Right? I'm, I'm devastated. I am, I don't know what to do. The whole world seems to be against me. I did very well, but I studied very well, but I didn't do my exams well. I, I don't see any, any future at all. And I'm really, really depressed. And I want you to help me. What will you do? Why you're saying that everyone gets into a situation, you'll give me advice. Yeah, all that is fine, but, but what will you do? What, uh, what is the, what is it that you will make me sit down in and, and, and give me a ride on? What will you do that? What will you do? No, no guesses. I'm sure many of you are guessing and I would love to sort of discuss this topic that I'm going to talk about at some point. Love to sit down with all of you and, and, and thrash it out. But I'm going to introduce the topic to you. What you will do, what you will do is to, is to, is to put me in a helicopter. Of course, you will be in the helicopter too. And you will take me 10,000 feet above and you will show me my life. You will show me my life over the next, uh, I'm now 16, so you will show me my life over the next, let's say, 70 years, which means 86. And you will show me 
and when i see when i see my life when i see my life what will i see i will see what is called a big picture and what is this big picture that you will show me you will show me that shiva your life is now at 16 yes i know you have done badly in your exam but look at your life when you are 20 you would probably have finished your graduation look at your life when you are 25 you would you would have entered a very very you know good masters or phd or whatever or why academics i would probably doing something else i may probably be in business when i am 30 i will be in a job when i am 40 i'll probably have bought a house and make my parents live in that house and therefore you will take me through my entire life and once i see my life from that big picture i'll start to understand i will not i will not do badly again in exam i'm not saying that i'll start to understand that doing badly in an exam is not the end all and be all of everything so what you're learning to make me be is be a big picture person and that's the topic for today big picture thinking so the question that you're asking is how can i see the big picture without losing sight of important details i know exam is important i know that passing and doing well is important at the same time how can i also see the big picture you know once i started telling myself i'm going to talk about the big picture i started preparing a lot of notes and i'm going to be referring to my notes in the next 10 15 minutes several times so that i don't miss out anything i i'm most of these notes are points of discussion that i want to have with you but essentially you have understood the big picture the big picture is the ability to take yourself up in a helicopter look at things from a different point of view not look at the narrow picture that is the big picture at some point during this lecture we must be able to connect the big picture thinking to biomimicry please start asking yourself what is the relevance of big picture in biomimicry the next point is how can i how can i increase the boundaries of my system to see a larger whole what does it mean it means that am i a person who is only looking at my family that's all am i looking at my neighborhood am i looking at my com- community am i looking at my state am i looking at my country am i looking at the earth so how can i increase the boundaries right or am i looking only for the next two years am i looking for the next 10 years 15 how can i increase my size right so these are the two ways of taking in the big picture two ways You remember that great story i'm sure everyone if you knows but it's always nice to repeat a great story so there is this 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 person who goes and asks this mason what he is doing he's saying what i'm just putting some one brick after the other he says so the same guy goes to the next mason he says what are you doing and this guy says i'm building a wall and the same guy goes to the third mason and says what are you doing and he says i am building a church three people doing the same job but each of them having a different picture in their heads and doesn't it happen to every one of us that whenever you know most of the times in our life we always see the small picture right for instance if i am a security guard i keep saying what is this i am a security guard these guys are going and coming around in cars but if i am a big picture person i know how important my job is and i think one of the things that all of us can learn from the big picture is to see what to see how our roles in an organization fit in the organization actually it's a very good way to look at life because it helps you understand what is the role that you must play in the organization and if you play that role well automatically you can expect to be a leader and things like that right so <clears throat> so so now what we're going to see very quickly is what can i do to become a big picture thinker which is why i've written some notes so one of the things is how do i see things that i can't normally see how do i help myself see things that i can't normally see what does it mean it means that there are certain things i can't normally see for instance i cannot normally see um see things that that will happen 5 or 10 years from now right so therefore constantly having that helicopter whenever i'm making an important decision going into the helicopter taking myself up is one of the ways so what we cannot see what we cannot see is very far into the future 
That's one thing we cannot see. So the question is, how do I make myself see what I cannot see? When I have a chat with all of you, you must be able to tell me more examples of what is it that you cannot see, for which you need to be a big picture person. The second is, a small system can be interacting with other systems, right? How do I take myself and look at all the systems? For instance, we, you know, if you come to a campus, if you come to a, let's say you are in the campus, you are an engineering college campus. You know, there are a lot of systems over there, right? There is the canteen system. There is the academic system. There is the exam system. There is the uh, alumni system. There is the hostel system. Every one of them has has their own elements, they're all there, small, small ones, right? Now, supposing, supposing one day the food is not very, you know, the food taste is not very good, let's say. And normally you'll get angry and you'll say, what is this? The food is very uh, not tasty, etc. But if you take yourself in helicopter again and ask yourself, what are the interactions? And you will probably notice that particular day their particular day, there is a transport strike. And because of the transport strike, many of the employees who normally work in the canteen are not able to come to work, which is why the main cook has not come to work that day. And that is why the food is not so tasty. So instead of immediately coming to a conclusion saying that whole world is out against you and, to, uh, and wants to give you bad food, if you're a systems thinker, if you're a big picture person, you can take yourself up and you can look at all the systems that interact and find out which system needs correction. Right? The next is how can I influence the, the, the picture? That is, when you, when, you, when, you, when you take yourself in the helicopter and or when you're taking me in the helicopter and when you're showing me my life, look at this, okay, it's very interesting. When you're showing me my life, right? You, show, you say, Shiva, look at your life. Five years from now, you've just got a job. 10 years from now, you have bought a car and a house. 15 years from now, you have a family. 30 years from now, you have, you have attained some sort of importance in your, in, your, in your own world. Now, in these stages that you're showing me, what is it that I can control and what is it that I cannot? I can control my expenses. I can control who I will be with. I can control what, what are the... Um, what is it that I want to do? Do I want to buy a car, house, etc.? There are certain things I cannot control. Now, those things that I can control, if I'm a big picture person, look at the opportunity, okay? It's almost, it's like, it's like scenario building. Look at the opportunity. You can actually start to, 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 to adjust certain things in your life. You can say, you know what? 30 years, I want a car, which means if 25, I'm still not qualified, then I will not be able to get a car when I'm 30. So right now, my big picture is telling me at 25, I'll only be a diploma holder or something like that. I won't earn enough money. So can I actually learn a new language and be, of course, be a very proud diploma holder at the same time, also learn a new language, French. And with my extra income in French, I look at the big picture. I said, 30 years old, I need a car. And how do I acquire a car, even though my job is not paying me very well, right? And suddenly you're saying, wow, I can actually control the picture. I can actually control things that can happen in my life. Now, the question is, the question is, how does the big picture connect to biomimicry? Any questions? So one of the things that we learned was that going up in the helicopter, right? Now, I'm join, going to make a blank statement here. I'm saying that you cannot learn biomimicry if you are not a big picture person. You cannot learn biomimicry because you cannot learn if, if you're not a big picture person. You agree or not? You have to agree, no? Because what does big picture do for you? It takes you up, right? It takes you up and makes you look at the whole world. You remember, you know, there's this great story I must share with you. There were these two, two astronauts going towards space. And while going, you know, very much out of the Earth's orbit, one of the astronauts is looking around. The other fellow is asking, what are you doing? What are you looking for? He said, I'm looking for the Earth. 
where is this? Where is the earth? And the other person says, look, look at that. That's that, that, that blue ball, that is the earth. And this person is surprised because this particular blue ball has no lines, just a beautiful blue ball. Because he is used to seeing the world with lot of lines and territories and all that, he can't recognize the, the blue ball from, the, from, from, the, from space as the earth. So what does it tell you? It tells you when you learn biomimicry, when you learn the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, you learn to see that blue ball. You learn to see that everything that you do, you're doing for the earth. And once you're a big picture person from that point of view, if you say that this is my earth, that it is not as if this particular land belongs to me, I can take myself up and see the entire earth. And I can see that the actions that I'm committing now can actually destroy some parts of the earth. Then I have to do something not to do those actions. So if I'm a big picture person, I'll do two things. One, I will start, I will start to look at the earth as my earth. And two, and two, I'll start to look for means and, and methods to protect the earth. And biomimicry is a definite way to do that. So this is the, this is the, um, you know, the link between biomimicry and big picture. And if, 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 if what you are learning is making sense to you, you will start to understand that every time, everything that we are doing in biomimicry, right? All the, the spiral, how to go from problem to solution, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, the, 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 the design principles of nature, all of that are starting to make sense because, because of the big picture in us, we are able to use biomimicry to protect that beautiful blue ball. So, I'm not going to speak anymore about the big picture, but I'm hoping that the big picture has, has, has made enough of an impact in you for you to read more about this and for you to sit down and discuss. And the most important thing is, can you influence others into becoming big picture thinkers?